In this tutorial, I'll teach you how you can refresh configuration properties for your microservices in real time without having to stop and start your services. So let's check it out. So we've got externalized configuration, environment specific configuration with property files and spring profiles. We have consistent configuration with the Spring Cloud Config Server, and we have version history thanks to the Git repo. There's only one thing that's keeping us back from our ideal state, which is if you want to make a change, you say make a change, submit to the Git repo, but you're going to have to restart your microservices because the property files are read when the application starts, when the services start. So let's say you make a change, you want to have all these microservices update to the new configuration without having to restart your services. How do you do this? Well, you do this by enabling refresh in your microservices. So let's try and understand the timeline for these different changes that happen. Okay, so I have this application, which is the client application, which is using a property file that it's trying to look up from Spring Cloud Config Server. And I have the config server running over here. Now, I can make changes to the property files by not touching either of these servers, right? I can, I can make a change without modifying this, without modifying this, which is the whole point of doing this externalized config server. And I do that by making a change to my Git repo. So here's my Git repo, which is local at this point, but you can imagine this being an external Git repo as well. So you have files over here, which contain the config, okay? Now I can make a change over here without touching these two services, okay? They're gonna be running in completely different hosts, for example, you don't have to touch them. So let's actually make a change here. So I'm gonna make a change to the Spring Cloud config.yaml and I'm going to update the greeting message over here. I'm calling this updated greeting. I'm going to save this, okay? And I'm going to commit this, change, okay? And now notice what happens. I am not restarting Spring Cloud Config Server. If I prefer to access, localhost 8888 slash spring boot config slash default. This is basically the file name or the microservice name slash the default profile, okay? So I'm accessing the spring cloud config server URL directly, which is reading from the Git repo. You notice here, it has the updated value. I didn't have to restart the server, okay? It has the updated value. Now if I were to go to the client, which is still running, which is connecting to the server, if I were to refresh this, notice here, it doesn't get the updated value. Why is this happening? This is happening because the server is always up to date. It's always looking at the Git repo for every request. So it is always current. You don't have to restart Spring Cloud Config Server when there is a change to the Git repo that contains the property files. This is always up to date. The challenge is in getting the client to be updated, okay? How do you get this to be updated? This is not always up to date and it is by design. When you have a bunch of microservices in your application, you don't want it to be constantly looking for updates to the config because it's, it takes time, it takes resources, and it is intensive. And it's not often that you make changes every second, right? The goal of those microservices are to do whatever they were created to do, right? The business problem they were meant to solve. You don't want to take valuable cycles, processor time, and you know, memory to keep checking, hey, has there been a config update? Has there been a config update, right? It's not meant to do this. The Spring Cloud Config Server, on the other hand, the whole business of this guy being here is config. So it makes sense for it to keep up to date and keep checking for configuration. So this is the way it is. Now, the only way to get this updated is by restarting the server. Okay, I restart the server, I restart the client server, and then it's gonna pick up the new value. But is there a way around it? Is there a way to get this updated without restarting the server? Well, there are a couple of steps to do this. The first thing you do is go to pom.xml and make sure you have a dependency on Spring Boot Actuator, right? The dependency name is Spring Boot Starter Actuator. Actuator provides a lot of endpoints. There is a tutorial on Spring Boot Starter Actuator providing a certain endpoint in this playlist itself. So check it out if you're not sure about what it does. But basically, there are a bunch of endpoints that it exposes, and we have allowed for all those endpoints to be exposed by this property here. One of the endpoints that Spring Boot Actuator exposes is a hook for you to call to tell the application to refresh its config. 
okay? So it provides an endpoint and you make a post request to that endpoint to say, hey, microservice, there is an update in the configuration, go fetch the newer configs from Spring Boot config server. The reason this is needed is because this microservice has looked up the configuration, obviously only when it started. That's why we're not able to make changes in on the fly, right? It's not looking up the configuration anymore. It's gotten it and it's cached it. So this dependency, Spring Boot Starter Actuator, provides that endpoint to say, okay, when this endpoint is called, this microservice is going to fetch all the config again, just like it did when it started up. So it's gonna provide the newer configs, right? That's the first step. The second step is to mark the classes and the beans and the services or whatever else, the spring components to say, these are components that I want refreshed with the newer configs, okay? It's not enough to just put this thing here and mark it as refreshed, okay? Spring is not going to refresh all the properties and all the configurations. It is only gonna refresh the properties and the configurations that are being used by beans that have been annotated with at refresh scope. This is an annotation that tells the Spring framework that whatever configuration is being used here, this needs to be refreshed. This is very similar to refreshing beans in general, and we are leveraging the dependency injection concept here. You notice here at value is basically dependency injection. So it's again the same concept of refresh scope, which is saying all the dependencies of this bean need to be refreshed. And what are the dependencies here? They're config values. So it's gonna be refreshed as well, okay? So there are two things that need to happen for a microservice to be able to refresh this dynamically, okay? The first thing is the dependency on actuator so that there is an endpoint that you can call to trigger the refresh. And then secondly, you need the refresh scope annotation to say all your dependencies, hey Bean, all your dependencies need to be refreshed. And the dependencies here are the configs and that's what, what is gonna get refreshed when you access the endpoint that you have exposed over here. Okay, so now that we have these two, I'm going to restart my server. And I'm gonna make a request to this endpoint that's been exposed by the actuator. Since it's a post request, I'm going to use Postman for this. You can use any REST API client that is capable of making a post request. So I have Postman open over here. And uh, this is the URL, localhost 8080, which is the microservice that's running, which is where we've added the actuator dependency and we've added a bean with refresh scope. Uh, actuator has a bunch of endpoints. Health over here tells that the application is up and running. There is an endpoint called refresh, okay? This is an endpoint that takes a post request. You can make a post request to the refresh endpoint and this is what is going to trigger a refresh. Why is it a post? because this is not an idempotent request. This is not side effect free, okay? This makes changes to happen, which is why it's been designed as a post. So this is the endpoint that we're gonna call when we want this application to refresh the config. So let's try this out and I'm gonna demonstrate how this works. So since we have refreshed the server, the change is going to be updated. It is going to be this updated greeting. So we need to make a change here again, but this time we are not going to restart the server. I'm going to make a change to the same thing here and uh, I'm going to call this newly updated greeting. Okay, save this, add and commit. I'm using terrible commit messages, by the way. Please don't learn from that. Uh, now I have this application, it's still running. Now I'm going to look at the server to make sure that it's updated. Okay, newly updated, it's getting the value. But now the client, which is looking at that server, doesn't know it, right? It's sleeping. It doesn't know that it needs to be updated. Now we have to wake it up. So the way to wake it up is by going to Postman and making a post request to this refresh token, uh, refresh API, sorry. And now I have uh, the headers content type application JSON, post body is essentially empty. I'm gonna make this send request. And now here, notice the response has the keys that it's looking up, right? So my.greeting is the value that's changed and uh, the config client version has changed apparently, but this is 
the updated value that it has said, okay, I noticed that this has changed and I've updated it. Now I can go back to my browser here and refresh. See here, I get the updated value, okay? And it did this because not only did it update the keys and all the updated values from the Git repo, it also knew that this particular bean had to be updated, right? It has refresh scope, so it knew that this had to be updated when those dependencies, which happen to be the config, changes, okay? So this is how you achieve the final goal in our list, which is dynamic configuration, okay? You have all your microservices, the hundreds of microservices that you might need in your application up and running with this setup in place, and when you change the config, you just go to the microservices which need to be updated and then you make that post request. You also have systems in place which can do this automatically for you. It's up to you, however you wanna do this. But this is something that you can either do manually or you can automate it so that you get this dynamic configuration functionality uh, with all the other benefits we've seen so far. We have an external centralized repo, version control, and now dynamic configuration as the best state of configuration that's possible for your microservices. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna teach you about some configuration strategies. You have multiple different ways to configure. You have property files, you have system variables, you have this external configuration. When do you use what? Do you always use Spring Cloud Config Server? Do you always submit to Git? Well, not exactly. So in the next tutorial, I'm gonna teach you some strategies that you can follow to make sure your configuration is pretty smooth. See you in the next tutorial.